morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are everybody doing? Good. All right. Okay. So we, we, we got to do a little bit better than that. Come on now. And I got a whole lot of people on this side. We, we a little thin over here. We're going to try it again. How's everybody doing this morning? Uh, okay. We'll, we'll give you all a chance later on once everybody gets in. So um, we're just so thankful for another day where God has allowed us to come and just worship together as a family. Um, it's been an awesome week, an amazing week. Uh, the kids have been their second week of school. We had a, a, a short week. Um, we had a holiday to celebrate, so we're just thankful for just another Sunday where we can come together and just begin a new week and get it off to the, on the right foot. Uh, we had an awesome event yesterday. It was our car wash event. Um, I think it's Pastor's favorite event, and so we're, we're sure to have it every year, and we're just so amazed every year about how many people come out and how they're amazed just how we're not taking donations. Um, they pretty much made us take some money. We was like, no, we cannot take donations. This is a free event. We just want to be a blessing to the people. Uh, we tell them if you want, if you have to donate, just come to church and put in the collection plate. But on Saturday during the car wash, we're not taking any money. So we were just thankful for those who came by. Um, the rain and the storms came and made us shut down a little bit early. But those who we saw, they were truly blessed, and we're thankful for that. Um, and we're just thankful for those who are here today, those who are on the way. We, we pray they make it here safely. Um, and we pray that everyone is here has a heart to worship God, because I know the praise and worship team, they were sounding good this morning when I came in. So we're looking forward to God using them this morning just to lift up praise. And again, this is not a show. This is just them helping all of us come together and worship God in unity. So when they come up here, this is not a show for you to look and watch. We're all going to join in together and just serve and worship God together, right? Um, just to let you know how the day goes, uh, I feel like praying today, so I'm going to pray first, and then we're going to come and have the praise worship team come in and lead us in the selection, and then we're going to have my sister Raleen come up and do the scripture, uh, then we have another selection, and then we'll have our welcome, and then announcements and some other stuff. So you'll see me again after I pray once we come back for the welcome, but uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, we're just going to stop and pray real quick, Okay. Thank you, Lord. God, this morning we just come to you, God, as humble as we know how. Thank you, God, for just who you are. God, we know that life is so busy, God, we're going from one place to the next, um, thinking about what we have to do tomorrow, what we have to do next week, thinking about the things we did last night and last week, and not in the present, God. So we just want to take a brief moment just to pause just to sit and, and be still and just be present in this moment, God. We know that every moment is special, God. We know that you can do anything if we just sit and be quiet and listen to you, God. I know that we had a lot going on in the past week, and we probably didn't give you the time that you needed, but we're going to stop today and give you the first fruits, God, of this day. We're going to tithe our time this morning, God. We're going to worship you before we, we, we give our problems any worship, God. We're going to worship you before we give our family and your worship. We're going to worship you before we worship ourselves, God. A lot of times we live selfish lives and without even realizing it, God, or we worship our family and, and, and do the things that they need because they are our responsibility, God, but uh, we were created to worship you. So this morning, God, we pray that you just touch our hearts, God. We pray that right now your Holy Spirit is just touching each and one of us, God. We pray that you'll be that still, small voice, God, speaking to us, confirming things that, that have been shown to us in the past, God, giving us vision about things that are in the future, God, giving us assurance about where we are right now, God, because we know that no matter what we're going through, if we're in you, God, that we're safe. So we thank you for that safety, God. We thank you for the safety for us to be ourselves, God. We thank you for the safety to be transparent with family, God. We thank you that we can share our, our, our sins with each other, God, and, and share them with you, God, so that we can be delivered, God. We're thankful that your word just leads us and guides us, God. We thank you for the desire to worship you, God, because there's a million other places we can be this morning, but we desire to be here in your presence with your people, and we pray that you will honor that, God. So as we go through this day, God, we pray that what we learned today and what we have today, God, it was it would fuel us for the rest of the week, that we will be on a, a, a spiritual high just just 
from what you did today, God. And we pray you just continue to touch those who are here today. Help us all to worship you in spirit and truth. And help us just to just to take hold and take take accountable of, of what you've given us today, today. After this present moment, God, we thank you, love you, and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. And we're going to have the praise and worship team come and lead us in worship. And see y'all in a little bit. Good morning, church. Y'all kind of quiet out there. Good morning, church. Good morning. There we go. There we go. So we're blessed to be able to come and just worship the Lord. And, and this is our invocation song. It's called, You're All I Need. Amen? Amen? So you know, like I know, God is really all we need. He's our healer, protector, provider, sustainer. Uh, and, and I remember a long time ago when I was growing up, especially when I was a young adult, I figured that, that a job was all I needed. I was wrong. That comes and goes. But God provides all we need. Amen. So we just pray that you pray this, sing this, worship this with us. Titled, You're All I Need. Come on, it's okay to clap your hands and lift up the Lord and give God all the honor. As we sing this song to him, you're all I need. Come on, follow along with us. Words up on the screen. Come on, tell the Lord. You're all I need. Any good? You're all I need. Father, you're all. You're all I need. You're all I need. Every breath you breathe through me. You're all I need. Let your rivers flow through me. Come on, set it by. Set it by. Be lifted. I'll draw all men to me. You're my closest friend. In you I live. Have my being. I want to draw closer. Need to draw closer. Be lifted. I'll draw all men to me. You're my closest friend. In you I live. Have my being. I want to draw closer, need to draw closer, I want to draw closer to me, to me.
Come on, tell the Lord. I need you. Today and every day. I need you. Come on, tell him you're all. Come on, tell him you're all. I need you. Father, I need you. I need you. You're all. You're all I need. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Lord. reading the scripture from Acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 9. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. May the Lord add a a blessing to the reading of his word. Always, I like to get a sneak peek of the scripture to kind of figure out where Marseille is coming today. So I'm looking forward to this word. Not sure where this is going, but I know it's going to be a powerful word. Um, so I just want to welcome you all again to BBCC branches of the Vine Community Church. Um, I'm going to say a good morning again because earlier this side was a little weak, and I see that we got a lot more people this time. So I'm say good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, it's a lot better. It's a lot equal. So, again, my name is Pastor Randall Crowder. Um, I'm just happy to invite to welcome you all this morning to Branch of the uh, Divine Community Church. Um, We're going to have our meet and greet in a second. But first, if we have any first-time guests, if you could just raise your hand for me. First-time guests. Okay, got two of them. We pray that you feel welcome. pray that you feel the presence of Christ today. And uh, just to get a taste of how BBCC rolls, this is, this is us every day. So I pray that you feel God's spirit today. Um, at this time, we're going to have our meet and greet. It's four minutes, so this is just a time for us to get up, mingle, meet people, um, just talk to other people. And um, after that, we're going to have Tanya come up and give announcements, and then we have another song, our praise and worship team, and we have Pastor come up with a word. So we have four minutes to get up and mingle, and uh, that's it. See y'all later.
about that time. <laughs> it's one of our favorite parts of service, right? Meet and greet? Yeah. Love it. Well, this is um, the second part of our service coming into the second half as we have our announcements right now. As always, we love to celebrate our people here at BBCC. So we do have um, some birthday shout outs. None other than Aisha had his birthday. Woohoo! Happy birthday. And Jasmine also celebrated a birthday. God bless y'all. Uh, also, small groups are returning this week. Yes, I'm excited as well. There's so much nourishment in small groups and um, so much information to be shared. So um, if you have not been contacted, please contact, uh, I want to say Randall, Pastor Randall, because we want to make sure you're connected with a small group. Um, so we are beginning this week. Uh, we do have an August invite challenge winner. So we get a little competitive and we want to invite people and um, to be a part of BBCC, it's a great thing. And so Tina Coleman, if you want to come up, Tina, you are our August invite challenge winner. Empower. And so we want to present this with you for all of your invites that you invited to BBCC. We thank you on behalf of the pastor. We appreciate the work that you did. And of course, there's always a little competition between the groups as well. And um, <clears throat> East Square won the challenge for August. <laughs> East Square won the challenge for August. <laughs> And so we encourage you for September um, to also do our Back to Church Sunday, right? Back to Church. We have Back to School, so now we're Back to Church, right? So try each and every one of you to invite at least two people to church next week. That's not hard, right? Just two people. Say two. I got that. Right? Two people. All right, and then the Embrace Small Group will have a brief meeting after service today. So if you're a part of Embrace Small Group, then you will be meeting after church today. And we want to give a shout out to the car wash. BBCC Outreach Car Wash was such a huge success yesterday. It was, the weather held up long enough to serve as many people as we could. Uh, we want to thank everyone who participated. It's an annual thing. And if you missed out this year, be a part of it next year. It was an amazing experience. It was my first time. And yeah, I was washing cars too. And so I enjoyed that. And um, it was a great community effort. Amen. So that's the end of our announcements, and the praise team will now come up. Good morning. Good morning. God has been so good to us. God is good to us, right? He is better than good, right? Amen. He's good to us even when we don't deserve it, Amen. right? If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise him enough for all he's done for us. But what we're going to do right now is worship him and praise him, give him all that we have because he's been so good. So you can join in and worship with us as we sing, Lord, you are good. You are good. You've been 
so good. Yes, you are. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I can't praise you enough. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try. feel worthy, still good to us. I don't know about you, but God has been better to me than I deserve. 
Let's just give God one more hand clap of praise for his faithfulness and his goodness. Oh, come on, come on. You sound like you're cheering for me now. Let's give up for, for give God the glory this morning. Hallelujah. God, we worship your name today, Jesus. You have been good to us. You paid our price. You died in our place. You gave us your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for grace and for mercy. Even when it doesn't feel good, you are still good. And today we bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good, church. He is so good, church. He is so, so good. Amen, amen. I want to... uh, Welcome all of our first-timers again. Hopefully you got one of those cards, those green ones. If you did not, please, uh, we'll get one to you. See me at the very end of service. I want to meet you. I want to give you a gift on behalf of the church and say thank you for worshiping with us today. But y'all, are y'all ready to get into the Word this morning? Y'all excited to hear what God has to say? Uh, we are going to go ahead and dismiss our kids uh, for, uh, for Children's Church today. Uh, for all of our elementary and middle school kids can make their way to the back, get to hang out with uh, Pastor Randall today. Y'all don't beat him up too bad. Uh, He was washing cars yesterday, and um, yeah, I know he's tired, but but Kim gave him five minutes break. We worked it out. I said, make sure you give my man a break. She said, I'll give him five minutes. (laughs) Amen, amen. We're going to, we're actually starting a new series this morning, y'all. We're starting a new series. I am excited about it. Uh, The series title is keep your eyes on the road. Keep your eyes on the road. Keep your eyes on the road. And I'm uh, in this series, we're going to be talking really about zoning in on what God has for us. Uh, Not materially, but from from, from the standpoint of our purpose, right? We're talking about making disciples, being disciples. uh, And our purpose as a church is to reach the people out there, right? We're supposed to grow up in here, but this is the locker room. Right? This is a locker room of life where we go out into the highways and the hedges and compel the lost to come to know Jesus. So we're starting this morning, uh, and, and the very first message is, is entitled Change Lanes. Somebody say Change Lanes. And, and Randall was like, I don't know where you're going with this one today, but if you hang in there long enough, you'll find out. We are going somewhere this morning. So we're going to be in the book of Acts this morning, uh, but before we get started, if you would pray with me, I don't know about you, but I need the Lord's help. I can't do this thing by myself. Uh, let's look to the Lord together uh, for prayer. God, thank you this morning, Lord God, for the opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you, God, for the communion, the fellowship that we have together, the encouragement that we get just from seeing one another. God, we thank you that you have empowered us, Lord God, to, do, to live this life for you. I pray, Lord God, that you would speak to your people now. God, I pray, Father, I thank you for the, your presence being here. Your presence, Lord God, which breaks yokes. Your presence, which sets captives free. Lord, and I pray that your presence and your power will speak to your people. God, hide me right now, God, and let them see more of you and less of me. I pray when it's all said and done that you get all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Anybody ever gone through uh, and tried to put together some furniture, uh, either from Ikea or a bookcase or uh, a chair or anything like that? And you find that after you've made it through a few steps, you did it wrong. Now, I mean, the, the, the chair leg is facing the wrong direction. Uh, or, or you finally finish it, and the bookcase you put together falls apart, right? That can be a little frustrating, can't it? I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't always read the instructions. I got any people that look at the pictures and say, I can figure this out on my own, only to find out that you did it all wrong, and you got to start all over again. I got any people transparent enough to say, yeah, pastor, that's me. A- 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 amen. Uh, but, but it can be frustrating, can't it, right? Because we, we tend to do it our own way and we get the wrong results. And we're going to be talking this morning about the Apostle Paul and the way he was going and how he had to change lanes. Now, now I am in the process right now of teaching a 15-year-old how to drive. Amen. Y'all pray for us. 
We're teaching a 15-year-old how to drive. And one of the things is things are all right. We started in parking lots, and, and, and we worked our way out to 35 mile, 25 mile per hour, 35 mile per hour. We have not worked our way up to the, to the big and bad I-64 yet, though, right? And, and, and one of the parts about driving or learning how to drive is that when you are changing lanes, it is a scary thing, isn't it? Right? I mean, because you got a whole lot of stuff you got to figure out, right? You got the car in front of you. You got the cars on the side of you. You got to make sure that you're going fast enough, right? You got to make sure you're in the correct lane. Uh, all of these things can come together and be terrifying, right? And, and the thing about when you're driving, anybody, you know, how many frustrated people, don't raise your hands for this one, uh, you get real frustrated when people who are supposed to be in the slow lane are not in the slow lane, right? They're they in the fast lane. <laughs> and, and, and the thing about this is that uh, it can be difficult, frustrating, or when you miss your exit. That's also difficult, right? Because you got to go further to turn around, uh, or you can find that you have wasted gas, wasted time because you've gone too far. Now, the thing I want you to look at, because even for me, I, made, I had my first accident trying to change lanes, right? My very first accident, and that ain't good when you got more than one accident, right? Uh, but, but. But my very first one was because I was trying to change lanes. And, and sometimes we are on this walk, we're living this life, and we are in the wrong lane. We're going our own direction, doing it our own way. We waste time, we waste energy, we waste years, right? We waste resources, we waste, we waste, we waste. And here we're going to be looking at Paul's life because Paul was going a certain direction, and he thought he was doing it the right way. Right? Most of us think that we are going the right way. Am, am I right about it? I mean, the things that we're doing, we believe that they are right. Otherwise, we would not be doing them. Uh, but, but the thing about it is that we've got to come to the place where our way, we realize that our way often turns out to be the wrong one. And we realize that God's way is the best way for us. And we've got to come to the place where we realize that he's the one that orders our steps. He's the one that calls the shots. And we've got to learn how to really follow and pursue his way for our lives instead of our own. So as you leave here today, I really want you to grab hold of the fact, right, that, that, that God's way is the right one. Uh, and, and really say, you know what, God, maybe today I need to change lanes. And let me give you the bottom line real quick. The bottom line is this. The bottom line says that if God's plan isn't first in your life, if God's plan isn't first in your life, change lanes. Change lanes. Because even though it's difficult, even though there's a lot of things going around, a lot of things moving, a lot of moving parts, you're nervous, right? But it's best for us to change lanes. We're going to look at Paul's story here in the book of Acts. Let's read it together. Here's what it says. It says, Paul, it says, but Saul, rather, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. It says he went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days, he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. So here, let's talk about how Paul changes lanes. You see, Paul, as you unpack the story, hopefully you didn't fall asleep during it uh, as I was reading it. But as we look at this, Paul was on his way to arrest some disciples, right? He had gotten a search warrant, so to speak. He's ready to kick in the door, wave in the 4-4, and... So y'all didn't get that one. <laughs> and some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and arrest some disciples, right? Paul, Paul was excited about persecuting Christians. And the thing about it was Paul, right, he was moving up in his religion. He was climbing the ladder of success, right? And, and the thing about it is 
Paul was climbing the ladder of success by persecuting Christians, dragging them off to prison, having Stephen stoned, right, and going through all of these things. He was moving up. He was climbing the ladder of success, but the problem was that the, was that the ladder was leaning on the wrong wall. Let me read you this quote. It says, people may spend their whole lives climbing the ladder of success only to find that once they have reached the top, that the ladder was leaning against the wrong wall. That's got to be frustrating, isn't it? A whole lot more frustrating than putting the table together wrong, right? But, but to find that you gave all your time, your energy, your effort into the wrong relationship. Your time, your energy, your effort into trying uh, to, to please people, into trying to, 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 to get the bag, as they like to say, right? We can climb the ladder of success only to find out that it was on the wrong wall. You see, Paul, Paul had a mission that was different than God's. His mission was different than God's. Let's look at what he talks about in terms of his mission. In Philippians, he said this. He says, hey, I, me, Paul, I was circumcised on the eighth day. Of the people of Israel, in other words, I'm from the right neighborhood, I'm from the right family, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. In other words, I was the one, right? I was always there at temple. I knew all the stuff. I memorized all the letters. I dressed the right way. I looked the right way. I had it all together. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. See, Paul was successful, right? Paul was climbing the ladder. He was doing it all right, but he had a mission that was different than God's. And here's the thing. See, Paul was passionate about the wrong thing. We can have passion, but the passion can be in the wrong area. You know, today is kickoff Sunday, right? And and we got our Eagles jerseys on. We got our uh, Redskins jerseys on. I see Dolphins jerseys in the back. Uh, I even see a New York hat in the back. Uh, and the thing about it is that we are passionate, but if that thing is our first passion, we're in the wrong lane. See, it's okay to be an interest, but it cannot be our idol. Uh, the, the thing about this is that for us, for us, some of us just want to reach a milestone like retirement. So that we can get to that place where trouble don't come no more. Am I right about it? I mean, some of us are trying to make it to Friday. We, we get to Sunday night. We're like, oh, Lord, I got to go to work tomorrow. But as soon as we get to work on Monday, we are counted down to what? Friday, right? Uh, we can be passionate about the wrong thing and lose sight of the mission, lose sight of our purpose. And I am just as guilty as any and everyone. But the thing about it is Paul is passionate. He's on his way uh, to go and arrest some more people. He's on his way to go and and, and, and take some more folks captive so he can move up a little bit more. But something happens what God intercepts Paul's plan. He, He intercepts Paul's plan. See, Paul is on the road to Damascus. Jesus shines this bright light, and he looks at him. He says, why are you persecuting me? Paul's like, who are you? And Jesus says, I am Jesus, the one that you are persecuting. And something happens, Paul loses his sight. He says his eyes were out wide open, but he couldn't see. And and the thing about it is, at this moment, God decides, Paul, I'm changing your lane. Here's what I've learned. I don't want God to change my lane. I better, it's a whole lot better for me to change my own lane than to wait on God to change it. Because God will get our attention, church. We've got to understand that if God changes your lane, He's going to get your attention. He's going to get your attention. So, so how, how, does, how, does Paul, how does Paul change lane? See, the thing about Paul's lane change that I want us all to grab hold of today is that Paul's lane change revolved around an encounter with Jesus. And, and so often, we want to have an encounter with, a, with the best song. We want to have an encounter with the fellowship meal. We want to have an encounter uh, by coming into the church. But so few of us have had an encounter with Jesus. And the thing about us as believers is that we can't uh, rest on mama's religion. We can't rest on daddy's relationship. We can't rest on the fact that I came and filled out the car. We've got to have an encounter with the king of kings and the Lord of lords and understand something. If you encounter Jesus, you will never be the same. You see, when Paul had this encounter 
when he had this encounter, everything about him changed. When he had this encounter, he went from murdering disciples to making and multiplying disciples. You talk about a turnaround, right? And God used his past. God used everything about him for his own purpose and for his own glory. And the thing about this is that we must understand that our lane change has got to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And the thing about this is, is during, during this time, remember, Paul encounters Jesus, and then what does he lose? Y'all remember? What does he lose? He loses his sight. In other words, he can't see anymore. And he says for three days, three whole days, he didn't eat anything, he didn't drink anything, and he could not see. Now, during this time of not being able to eat, not being able to see, right, Paul gets close to his creator. And if you've got, uh, if you are in a place where God's call in your life is not clear, guess what? You need to get closer to the creator. Because the closer you are to the creator, the clearer the call is. And and during this time, it says Paul didn't eat anything. Paul didn't drink anything. He was just in the presence of the creator. During that time, he was getting a download from God. He was understanding what God really wanted him to do because he had this encounter with Jesus and his voice was ever more clear. For so many of us, our encounter is not really with Jesus. Our encounter is with church. Our encounter is religion. But we've got to get to the place where we are encountering Jesus Christ himself. See, there's a problem. There's a problem with our own plans. There's a big problem with our own plans. And the thing about this is that uh, when we are following our own plan, we have the best intentions, right? We have the best intentions. And you see the picture up here uh, of, of Granny. Granny is, has downloaded 100 uh, viruses, uh, and she says, I better download this free virus protection software from this pop-up ad. And, and she's trying to fix the problem, but by fixing the problem, she's going to create new problems, Right? And the thing about it is when you first get your computer, you first get your phone, it runs really well, doesn't it? But the more stuff you click on, the more places you go, right, it starts to get bogged down. But all these ads and these malware and all of these things. And I've learned that the more I click outside of God, the more attacks, the, the more attacks my software and my operating system. And, and you and I have got to get to the place where we understand that in our own strength, our own power going our own way, we had the best intention. When you clicked on it, you were trying to just download a recipe for some cookies, but you actually downloaded a virus onto your computer. And you were trying to go and just have a relationship or a friendship or go and meet some new people, but you were actually downloading new drama, new traits, new, uh, uh, no, new baggage into your life. Because, but you were doing the best you thought you knew how to do, but it wasn't God's plans. Here's the thing. Proverbs says this. Proverbs says, many are the plans in the mind of the man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Let me, let me read that again. Many are the plans in the mind of the man. In other words, we all got good ideas, but every good idea is not a God idea. I've learned that for myself. I, every, every good idea is not a God idea, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, okay, Pastor, you're talking about Paul. Paul out here killing people, right? He out here locking people up. That ain't me. That's not me, right? You're like, I'm not persecuting the church. I'm not locking people up. Pastor, that's not me. I'm not that bad. I, mean, I don't know about you. That's how I felt like when I read it. I never locked nobody up, uh, Lord. But if you're anything like me, right, you just want to have some peace and calm in your life. Am I right? I mean, it's Sunday. Can I just go home, take a nap? Can I just chill out? Can I, can I get some chicken wings all day and just relax? <laughs> but do you know, do you know that most people don't know their purpose? I mean, do, do you know, though, that all of us have a purpose from God? But few of us actually know what it is. I love this quote. It says, all of us were born originals, but many of us are going to die a copy of somebody else, right? We're going to die a copy of somebody else's dream, somebody else's definition, right? Somebody else's standard instead of what God really wants for our lives. See, I've learned this. I've learned that doing it your way will always cost you. Doing it your way will always cost you. I remember when my, my son Jaden uh, was born, and, and uh, he was early, so he was, he was supposed to be born in April, and he came like three or four weeks early. And I wasn't ready, right? I, my wife told me it's time to go to the hospital, and I looked at her. I was like, we're not going to the hospital. They're going to send us home. Uh, it, it's a waste of time. I looked at her like, you don't know, but I should have realized it was her third child. She knew what she was talking about. So I reluctantly, <laughs> I reluctantly went to the hospital, right? 
And, and we checked in. I mean, we, this kid was almost born in the backseat of my car, just, just really. I almost had a whole, test, whole different testimony of local pastor delivers child in the backseat of a car. That was almost my testimony. But by the grace of God, we made it to the hospital. Praise God. But I wasn't ready. His room wasn't ready. My daughter's room wasn't ready. So in the midst, right, of, of all of the rushing, uh, he's in the, my wife's in the hospital. Where, you know, he's going, doing his thing, whatever. And I come home, and I realize I've got to get his room ready. So I come home, and I decide I'm going to do it my way, and I'm rushing, and, and, and I'm putting together this dresser. So I'm rushing again. Yeah, I'm, I'm going somewhere. So I'm putting together this dresser. Wife's in the hospital. Baby's in the hospital. Pastor's at home. Trying to put together this kid's room. So in the course of it, I skip directions. I skip instructions, right? And I'm putting the side of this dresser, and it has this slide that goes in and out. Somehow in the midst of me rushing, not following directions, the slide came out. It cut me in the face. And I had to go back to the hospital with my wife. And I'm I'm not talking about a scratch, y'all. That thing cut me down to the white meat. Y'all know what I'm talking about when you get cut down to the white meat. I I mean, that thing cut me so deep, I thought I had to get stitches, right? But the thing about it was I was doing it outside of the plan. I was doing it rushing. I was doing it under pressure, and I wasn't doing it the right way. Doing it our way will always cost us. So the question we got to ask ourselves is when I did it my way, how much time did I waste? When I did it my way, how much money did I waste? How many years did I I waste? And the question for us today, if I'm doing it my way, if God's way is not my top priority, then I need to do what I need to change lanes. Let me give you this and I'm going to get out your way. I know it's one one o'clock's coming and y'all getting ready for for the game. And, uh, you know, I I know all that's coming. I don't want you looking at me funny. But but the thing is, when it's time to change lanes, here's what you do. The very first thing, when when you get ready to change lanes, you put your signal on. You hear that, Karis? You put your signal on. <laughs> Not that you don't, but we're just going to reinforce what we're already working on. So, so the question is, 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 your, is your career your top priority today? Is, is it getting that money? Is it getting a new house? Right? Is it worried about what people think? You got to post something on Instagram every 30 minutes. Right? You got to have a new selfie here, your new outfit there. Right? Uh, uh, but, but the question for us is God calling you to change lanes. And, and as you put your signal on, sometimes the first signal is just saying, yes, God, I'm willing. I don't know how. I don't know what to do. But God, I'm putting my signal on saying, I'm going to trust you to lead my life. I'm going to trust you to order my steps. Uh, I'm not going to lean to my own understanding, but I'm going to acknowledge you and trust that you will direct my pathways. I'm going to put my signal on. See, I've been driving incorrectly all this time, and I want to get in step with you. That's the first thing we got to do is put our signal on. But the thing about it is not just putting our signal on. We've got to remove everything that blocks our view of God. Y'all know the frustration of going to the movies, going to a game, sitting in a stadium, and somebody that's seven foot and four inches tall decides to sit front in front of you. I, I mean, and if you've never been there, you might be that person. But, but the thing about that is that when you, when you hop into the movie, right, we, we hop into the movie and we can't see. How many of y'all are just going to sit there and say, okay, well, I guess I'm just, I just wasted my $11.95 eating this popcorn to watch the back of their head? Nobody does that. Excuse me, excuse me, can you move? Or we get up and move. And the reason that we move is because what's on the screen is more important than the back of their head. And we decide I am not going to settle for this situation any longer. I wish I had a church that was like, you know what, I'm not going to settle for this view of life where God is not what I see. I'm not going to settle any longer for living a life looking at the back of this person's head because God's been too good. What did we just see? You've been better than good to me. And we've got to get to the place where if we're not seeing God in our lives and our families, then we got to get up and move. But as you get ready to move, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking my seat, as you get ready to move, you got to look out for the blind spots. The thing about when you get ready to change lanes, there are blind spots, aren't there? There are things that you can move over that were there that you didn't know were there. And if you decide to move without realizing your blind spot, without checking, without looking, guess what? You're going to cause a big accident. And, and the thing about it is that we've got things in our lives, and we must realize that the enemy knows our blind spots. He knows uh, what you like. 
He's been studying you from the day that you were born. He knows how to push your buttons. He knows how to, he knows the, what, 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 what you are attracted to. And to understand, he will send the thing you are attracted to. The moment you step towards God, he's going to throw the kitchen sink at you because he wants you to be discouraged. But you've got to realize that you've got some blind spots. And this is where biblical community becomes so important. Because your blind spots, the thing I love nowadays, they equip ca- cars with cameras. Uh, May is not here, but I was, I was bringing my old uh, Honda Pilot yesterday, backing up, and they were behind me, and they were nervous because they didn't think I could see them. But I saw them, and they were like, Pastor, we thought you were going to run us over. And they, she asked, you got a camera on your car? I said, no, I got uh, two eyes, and I can see. But understand something, right? When you, we get ready to move, our cars are equipped with cameras, extra mirrors, and all of these things, sensors. When you start backing up there, beep, 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 going off, and, and everything, this, that, and the third, so that you don't have a collision. You must understand that God has placed the church here so that we as a body can be the signals going on saying, nope, don't go over there in that relationship. Don't, 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 don't waste your money on this. I haven't seen you in six months. You need to show back up. Understand these are the signals to help to guard your blind spots so that you don't crash when you try to turn. We would think it foolish if we, 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 we had all these beeps going off and we just decided to keep on backing up. I mean, can you imagine that the officer talking to you, man, what happened? Well, uh, the, the, the signal was going off, the sensor was going off, but you know what? I kept right on backing up because I just knew better. I just, I, I figured the sensor had to be wrong. I just really wanted to go there. And all you got is damage. And the officer's looking at you like, this though, I, I, I can't believe this. I got to tell somebody this story. But, but understand something. That's how God's looking at us. He's telling us over and over in the word, don't touch that. Don't go over there. All right? You got people calling you. They're not the one. Uh, don't take that job. Don't quit that job. Don't leave that relationship. All of these things are sensors in our lives guarding our blind spots. But we want to do it our own way, don't we? Let's just keep it 100. The thing about it is look out for blind spots. And the last thing I want you to do is, is, is take action. Take action. Because when you're going to change lanes, when you're first learning, sometimes when, when I was getting ready to change lanes, I would get nervous and I would slow down. And, and the worst thing you can do when you are trying to change lanes on I-64 is slow down. Because if you slow down, you might get hit in the back. You won't have all these horns beeping at you. You're going to have a problem if you slow down. But understand something. When God is calling you and he's saying it's time to change lanes, sometimes you got to push on the gas and say, I'm going forward for God with all that I got. And guess what? I'm trusting that his angels are around me. His spirit is within me. His church is supporting me. The prayers of the saints are upholding me. And I'm going forward. We've got to get to the place where we are no longer going the wrong direction, but we want to taste and see the the Lord is good. Don't just taste, start eating the whole buffet. Understand something. God wants to be first. And you may be saying, Pastor, I didn't kill nobody. I'm just, I'm just trying. My man Nate used to say, Pastor, I ain't making no noise. I'm just, I'm just trying to live this life and make it. Make it to the end. But understand something. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the Lord's plan that will stand. We got to ask ourselves, am I, is, is God's plan first? Am I pursuing that plan for my life? And if I'm not, maybe I need to change lanes. We're going to stop right here. Every head bow, every eye closed. You've, you've heard this message today, and you realize that the way I've been walking, the way I've been moving, what I've been doing, I've been doing it my own way. As you look on your handout sheet, there's a few questions down there, and it, it basically is asking you, What's first? What's first? And I've learned that I can tell what's first in my life based on how I spend my time. And if I'm spending all of my time on my social media account, maybe that's first. If I'm spending all my time trying to get that money, maybe that's first. If if I'm spending all of my time doing things other than what God wants for me, that's first. See, we can say God's first. But our actions are what's really going to show it. As you look at your own life, I'm looking at mine right now. There are some things that I've allowed to creep in. Maybe some things that you've allowed to creep in. And they push God out. Today you're saying, Pastor, I need to change lanes. And maybe you don't know the things you're supposed to do, but you're willing to put your signal on and say, God, I want to make a step towards you. I don't really know how to put you first, but... I'm just going to trust and understand something. Paul couldn't see 
He didn't know where to go. Somebody else had to lead him into Damascus. But, but when they led him there, he stayed. He listened. God gave him a direct download of what he was supposed to do. And because he was obedient, you now have most of the New Testament today. Because he was obedient, the, 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 the church spread all throughout Asia, all throughout Europe, all throughout because he was obedient, because he changed lanes. What would life look like if you changed lanes today? What would your family look like if you changed lanes? What would your children's lives see if you changed lanes? How would your relationship with your spouse be different if you changed lanes? I know you're looking and you're saying, Pastor, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm so uncertain, but I, I don't know what to do, and I'm, I'm nervous about it, and it's going to cost me so much, and I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I, just, I just don't have it all together, but put your signal on. Just put your signal on. And maybe, maybe you've put your signal on before. Maybe you've made that confession with your mouth. You've already let Jesus know that you want him to be Lord and Savior, but, but the very next day, you fell back into that bad relationship. The very next day, you start cussing and fighting and all these kind of things again. The very next day, you found all of these things, and you fell back in sin, and you're like, there's got to be something wrong with me. Understand that these are your blind spots. And you're saying, Pastor, I need community around me. I need, I need to, to really dig into the Word. I really need to know God in a better way so that I can know the blind spots, so that I can be victorious in this life as a disciple. And then maybe you're saying, Pastor, I need to take some action because today, 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 I know God's calling me for something else, but I really can't find my purpose. I really don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like a copy of somebody else. But today, I want to hear clearly, and I want to draw near to my Creator. If that's you, you've heard these calls today, the call to take action, the call to put on your signal, the call to recognize your blind spots, the call to move things out of your life so that you can have a clear view of God. I want you to just slip your hand up right where you are. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Every head's still bowed, eyes are still closed. Just keep that hand up so I can see you. You're saying, Pastor, today I want to take a step. I'm putting my signal on. And I, I've, I've learned this, that every time I take a step towards God, he takes a step towards me. He said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So understand something. God is drawing near to you right here and right now. thank you for your honesty. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for those who have made this step. They're, they put their signal on and saying, God, I'm stepping towards you. Lord God, I pray for them. I know that they're not going to get it right because none of us do because we've all sinned and fallen short of your glory. But we thank you, God, that you are committed to us. We thank you, God, that you are faithful. And Lord, today we, we want to start by just confessing our sins. You said, Lord God, in your word, if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive them and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. So we confess our sin before you right now. Wash us clean. I pray, Lord God, for the person who's raised their hand, Lord God. I thank you that you see that hand, that you know their heart. And even for the person who was struggling, they wanted to, but they, 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 did, they didn't for whatever reason, God. Meet them right where they are, too. I pray, Father God, that our commitment is to you, that you are first in our lives. Lord God, we declare today. From the, from the fruit of our lips, that you are on the throne of our lives. And God, we want to remove everything that's standing in the way. God, we make a commitment today to start seeking you more, to get into your presence more, to, to put the phone down and to give you the first part of our day. God, to, to get away from all the complaining that we do and to replace that with praise. And Father God, we want to take action today that our lives are full of the purpose of God. If we don't know our purpose, I pray that you would show us. God, if we know our purpose and we haven't been walking in it, I pray, God, today that we would draw near to it and reconnect to that purpose and go forward with everything that we have. Father God, we just give you the praise right now. I thank you for those, Lord God, who are making a faith step today. And I pray, God, that their lives will never be the same. God, I pray for a divine encounter with Jesus. Lord, I pray that our encounter is not with the church. I pray our encounter is not with money. I pray our encounter is not with the, with the opinions of people, but our encounter is with the man, Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, that you would transform us by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord God, that you would draw us as the deer pants for the water. I pray our soul would thirst for you. God, I pray that you would dry up appetites for alcohol, dry up appetites for, for people, draw up appetites, Lord God, that have us bound, Lord God. Draw up appetites of lack and fear and doubt and worry and anxiety, God. Draw it all up, God, and allow us, Lord God, to just draw near to you. Father, we need you and we cannot do it without you. Lord God, give us a view of you 
And God, I thank you that as we change lanes, as we change lanes, God, we're going to see your power at work in us. As we take action, we're going to see you moving in our families, breaking down generational strongholds. We're going to see you moving in our community, bringing people who are addicted to be delivered. Lord God, people who are bound being set free. Lord God, we come against every attack of the enemy right now. Anoint us to be disciples, true followers of Jesus right here and right now for your glory. God, we believe it done. We stand with you in faith. Lord God, we trust you to be God in our lives. We love you, we honor you, and we bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise.